question, where is happiness to be found? Uh, and, uh, you know, we could start by eliminating a few places and some of the most sought after places. Uh, and uh, how many know the places that we look most of the time come up way, way short uh, of what happiness really uh, uh, is all about? How many of you know a new car will not make you happy? Amen. A new motorcycle is not going to make you happy. A new computer is not going to make you happy no matter how slow the old one might be. Amen. Uh, a new husband is not going to make you happy and a new wife is not going to make you happy unless, of course, uh, the Lord has made that person a new creature and made him new in that sense. Uh, and then he might be able to make you happy with a new spouse. Amen. Uh, uh, a new job is not going to make you happy. A new boss is not going to make you happy. Uh, none of those things that we have just mentioned have the ability to make you happy. Amen. Uh, when you buy a brand new car and, uh, and uh, one of your uh, neighbor kids runs into it with a bicycle, how many know your source of happiness just disappeared? Amen. Uh, uh, guess what? A new dog will not make you happy. We got a new dog about a year ago. Uh, got a neighbor that called me just this last week, letting me a message on my uh, answering machine. But Mark, you're going to have to do something about that dog. Uh, it's up here all the time. I'm getting tired of running it off. It's, it's eating my dog food's dog uh, food. And uh, you're going to have to do something about that dog. Uh, my dog, as most of you know, have a, I've got a new truck too. Uh, just about a year old. And my dog is a golden retriever. It just happens to carry a stick in its mouth every place it goes. Uh, and it'll carry a big stick and it'll carry little sticks. So when my truck is parked outside, if you look at it real close, you'll find out I've got scratches all over my brand new truck, just where that new dog has carried sticks all around my truck, looking to see where I'm at. And, uh, and uh, how many of you know, uh, 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 a new truck will not make you happy. I talked to a fellow not too long ago. He had a new brand new four-wheel drive Dodge truck. Uh, four doors, four-wheel drive, big old Dodge Dooley diesel, and uh, it had a radiator and it had sprung a leak and he was about as miserable and frustrated as they come and it's all because the temporary joy uh, of a brand new truck or new vehicle had just let him down uh, and he was disappointed and you know what? It infected the entire disposition of his soul uh, because once uh, one thing that he was satisfied with was now uh, it now had the ability to absolutely not just ruin his day uh, probably didn't just ruin his week it probably ruined several weeks of his life uh, and it messed up what he normally had as a nice quiet disposition a little uh, of what I call West Dolphin Ball teaching amen uh, it's a reminder that all these things are just simple experiences external problems. Uh, they are just waiting for us to react in the right way, amen, uh, in God's way with a sweet spirit uh, so that they can be converted from an external problem to a real blessing uh, for the kingdom of God. How many know that all things work together for good uh, to those who love God and are called according to His purpose, amen? Uh, and that is true even for a scratch on your new truck, amen? Uh, if there's one thing that I can tell you with an absolute certainty. It is this. Uh, it's the joy of material things do not last. Uh, there will come a time when temporal things will come up short uh, and temporal things, uh, worldly pleasures uh, will not satisfy. Jesus said in another translation of verse 15, uh, watch out, be on guard of all kinds of greed because a man's life does not consist of the abundance uh, of his possessions. Uh, Dr. James Dobson, who is formerly now, I guess formerly now, the uh, 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 head of Focus on the Family. I understand he's left that ministry and started another ministry now. And, uh, and uh, he said it very well. He said these words. He said, though I can make no claim to wealth, he said, I've tasted most of the things Americans hunger for. New cars, new attractive home, new gadgets and devices that promise to set us free. He said, looking at those materialistic possessions from the other side of the cash register, I can tell you they don't deliver the satisfaction they advertise. How many of you know that's true? Uh, he said, on the contrary, I found great wisdom in the old adage, that which owns you, uh, or that which you own will eventually own you. He said, how true it is. He said, having surrendered my hard-earned dollars for new objects uh, that only obligate me to maintain it and protect it, and instead of contributing to my pleasure, I spend my precious Saturdays oiling it, mowing it, 
painting it, repairing it, cleaning it, or calling the Salvation Army to come and haul it off. Uh, the time that I might have invested in worthwhile family activities uh, is spent in slavery to a depreciating piece of junk. God says you cannot serve two masters. Uh, you cannot serve God and money. Uh, you will either hate the one and love the other uh, or hold the one and despise the other. Uh, but you cannot serve God and money at the same time. Colossians chapter 1 verse to, uh, uh, chapter 3 verse 1 to 3. Uh, since then you have been raised with Christ. I always like this. Uh, set your hearts on things above. Uh, anybody ever run a race before? Uh, anybody ever said ready? Set Go. Anybody ever said it? How many want to go to heaven today? If you want to go to heaven today, you know what you got to do? You got to get ready, number one. How do you get ready? You get ready by making Jesus uh, the Lord of your life. Uh, you get ready by repenting of your sins. Uh, you get ready by getting saved. You get ready by getting born again. Uh, you get ready by saying, Lord, I sure messed up. Uh, I need you to come into my life. I need you to change my heart. I need you to make, my, make me a new creature, Lord. Uh, I need all things to pass away in my life. Uh, I need all things to become new. Uh, that's how you get ready. Uh, but you know what you got to do after you get ready? Uh, you got to get set. Uh, you got to set your heart on things above. Uh, where the Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Uh, you got to set your mind on things above. Uh, not on earthly things for you died. Uh, and your life is now hidden with Christ uh, in God. Uh, if you get ready, uh, if you get set, you know what? You get to go one day. Amen. That's what it's all about. Uh, if we're ever going to find happiness in this life, uh, we got to realize uh, there's more to life than this life. Yes, right. Amen. Uh, how many know there are a lot of people, some of you in this room, are passionate about different things. Uh, some of you are passionate about golf. Some of you might be passionate about fishing. Some of you might be passionate about motorcycles. Some of you are passionate about cars. Some of you might be passionate about houses. Somebody might be passionate about decorating or whatever the, whatever the case is. But let me just tell you right now, cars or whatever else it is are just cars. A car can't hug you. A car can't cry with you. A car can't laugh with you. A car can't share its life from you. A car can't encourage you. A car can't love you. A car can't appreciate you. But how many of you know people can do every one of those things and a whole lot more? Material things are not meant to be our all-consuming passion in life. If they are, then we have missed the boat on what God has a desire for us to be. And we will miss out on the greatest happiness your life can find. Here's what Philippians 2 verse 3 and 4 says. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. But in humility, consider others better than yourself. Each of you should look not only at your own interests, but also at the interest of others. Now listen, I know our interests are important to us, but they shouldn't be to the point that we pay little or no attention to the interest of other people because people are eternal and cars and hobbies are temporal, amen? I don't care what your pleasure is, it is just temporal, amen? True joy is found in people, therefore we must focus on people rather than possessions if we're going to find the greater joy in our life. I mean, in OG Jesus is the only way to find long-lasting joy, long-lasting happiness. And it's a matter of following Him. It's a matter of doing His will. It's a matter of focusing on eternity and not on earth. It's a matter of focusing on people and not possessions. It's a matter of focusing on service and not self. 2 Corinthians 4.18. I'll quit right here. While we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. You know what that means? This everything you see is temporal. Except people, of course. Everything you see is temporal. <coughs> everything you do is eternal. Everything you see is temporal. <coughs> everything you do is eternal. Why don't you stand on your feet this morning, Pastor?